and good morning. Well, really it's good afternoon. I'm currently setting up my new iPhone. So excited. Um, and Renzi is napping. So I wanted to sit down and film for you guys today. I'm just gonna do like a get ready with me slash story time video because I feel like so many people have been asking some questions. The biggest one has been like why I moved and I know it's been like, like two or it's been like it's been like almost four months since I moved so I figured I can like give you guys like the little story time of why. So I really wanted to set it up as a new iPhone because I have like 50,000 photos, but I don't think that's what's happening. I'm like restoring from iCloud backup because you know what, it's so annoying when you, I've done this before in the past and then you have to like re-download all your apps and all that. So I think what I'm gonna do is import everything onto my computer so that I have it as like a backup saved and then just like delete the past, obviously I'll keep the last year with my baby. I want every picture of him on my phone, but there's just so much unnecessary stuff, so. So when I woke up earlier, I already applied lotion. I used the Ultra Hydration Cream. So I'm not gonna put any more of that because I just don't need extra as of right now. I'm gonna use the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk in number six. I have someone coming this week to look at my new beauty room because I have not been able to unpack anything. Everything's still in boxes over there. So I haven't been able to like set up my workspace and like unpack and do all that, which I feel like is necessary because that's like my office. So as I mentioned in my last video, I've just been kind of sitting in my bathroom filming. So I'm ready to get everything set up. So I don't know what I'm gonna do in there yet. I do have a wallpaper that I have in mind. So I really haven't done much as far as like furniture and all that. I'm working with a designer as I mentioned. Now that my kitchen is all done, pretty much. Um, that was like my main thing for the first couple of months that I've been in here. As you guys probably know, because I shared kind of the whole kitchen struggle. So that was like obviously my main priority because that's where I am the most. And I did bring my kitchen table, my couch, my bed sits, like all of the necessities are here, but now that like that's all settled, I'm definitely gonna start decorating. So I love home decor and all that. So I will definitely be sharing the whole process with you guys along the way and asking for suggestions. So definitely follow me on Instagram if you guys don't, because I love suggestions. I'm gonna do my brows. If anyone wants an updated brow tutorial, they're not done, I always do them like in steps. Let me know. So I've seen a lot of people after I posted the saying goodbye forever video asking me why I decided to move. And it's kind of not a long story, but I figured instead of like just sitting down and doing a story time, I would do kind of like a makeup or a get ready with me style video. So I've mentioned before in a couple of videos that when I moved to my last place, I knew it was not gonna be my forever home. My last house I did build, it was new construction. So they were townhouses, um, they were big townhouses. It felt like a house, but um, when I was building it again, I knew it wasn't gonna be my forever home because although I had like a little outdoor patio, you don't have your own yard. It's just like it had like its little backyard. Mine was nice because it was backed up to the woods, so it was private, but again, it wasn't like my own yard where I'd be able to do a pool and all that stuff, which of course is something that I've always, always wanted for myself. So in my YouTube career, the past 11 years, I have moved a lot. When I first moved out for the first time, it was, after I had started YouTube, I was 21 years old. So I moved out literally right around the block from where my mom was living at the time. So it was like moving out, but staying, you know, still close. And about a month after moving out, I had my boyfriend at the time, who was Brett, moved in with me there. We were there for like two, no, maybe two years-ish. And then we moved to another place where we rented for about two to three years. And then from there, I really, really wanted to buy a house. At the time, I did think we were gonna be together forever, so I bought like a forever type of house. And the word forever, on, as far as like real estate, I guess is something that, I don't know, nothing's ever, you never know if anything's really forever as far as like where you're living. But 
I bought a house of my dreams. I had worked really, really hard and I saved a lot of my money because I knew I wanted to buy something. Renting is always a good idea, but obviously owning and putting your money towards a mortgage was definitely something that I wanted to do. So I had bought the house up north. So at that time when we were looking, I was thinking of building from scratch, but I didn't want to wait like that year mark that it would take to build a house, which is really not a long time at all. Where I am now, I was actually looking at like five years ago and I was like, no, I don't want to wait, I don't want to wait. And that's when I had found the house that I was in two houses ago. So it was literally perfect. I was in love. Um, we ended up moving in there. So then I went through my breakup with Brett and at around the same time I was breaking up with him, I had my dad move in with me. And you know, it was a big house to be by yourself in. Obviously my dad was there, so it made it a lot better. Um, but that's when I started looking again to downsize because I didn't want to be, you know, alone, far away from all my family and friends. I was about an hour, an hour and a half from all my family and friends at that point. And, um, so that was when I started looking again. So that's when I went to my last house, which I built, which was a townhouse. I felt like it was like perfect for just me and to, you know, start this new chapter of my life. So that's where I was before this house. So I moved into my last place in 2018, I believe. Fast forward to 2020, August of 2020, I find out that I'm pregnant. So in between all that time, um, I'm a Zillow freak. I don't know if anyone else is like this, like where you're just always looking at houses on Zillow and you know, at that stage of my life where I was in a relationship and then I found out I was pregnant, I was looking regardless because I was like, okay, well now it's time because I want to you know, have a house, have a yard, have all of that. So obviously you guys know, I'm not gonna get into it. I went through a breakup while I was pregnant. So that kind of like put a fire under my ass more than just kind of like browsing through Zillow. And that's when I made the decision around that time to um, build the house that I'm in now, knowing it was gonna take a year. Where I lived, my master bedroom was on the first floor and the guest bedroom that I was turning into the nursery was up on the second floor, which I didn't love the idea of being on a different level than my baby. Being pregnant and being single, like it's definitely not something that anyone ever plans for or anybody really, um, you know, fantasizes about. And I was just genuinely really scared because, you know, I had never been a mother before. I, this was all new for me. And I'm like, all right, so I'm not even gonna have a guest room now and God forbid I need help or, you know, I didn't really know what the situation was gonna be. So that was definitely something that crossed my mind. Um, and then also I had just gotten a puppy about like a month prior. So, you know, just not having a yard. Like there was just so many things going through my head. I was like, kind of felt like that pressure to make a decision quick instead of just waiting around for the right house to pop up. Um, why not just build the house that I've been wanting to build for like the past seven years. Wait the year and build the house from scratch and do everything the way I want to do it. So that is why I decided. That's like the story, I guess, kind of behind why. So that's kind of like the backstory. I'm trying to think if I like forgot anything. I think the biggest thing was like, you know, now that I had my son, I wanted to find like my forever home. I've worked really hard the past 11 years and I've saved a lot of money and I really wanted, I always wanted this like dream home. And I figured, you know what, I'm at a point in my life, I'm 31 years old, I'm about to be 32. Like why wait to find the partner and to get married and all of that to go and build my dream home when like, let me just do it for myself. So yeah, I mean, obviously my, my situation isn't the most ideal for most people, but I am just going with the flow of life and I'm just creating the life for myself that I wanted even if it's not in the right order that maybe most people believe is right or most, or even myself thought would be for myself, if that makes sense. I feel like they make us all believe that there's like this timeline and this like like step-by-step -step process of where we should be and what we should be doing. And you know, by 31, like I'm not married, but I have a baby and I have a house. And like most people would maybe, you know, look down upon that or, you know, have stuff to say, which I'm sure people do. But you know what, this is what's working for me and this is where I'm at in my life. And I'm actually really proud of myself and who I am now and what I'm doing and um, I'm in a really good place. So that's really the story. So as much as it was hard, 
leaving everything behind from my dad. I have to say the new owner of my house is literally an angel. <laughs> So I had some packages that went there. She had got my number and told me and I went over and she saved so much. Like it's so beautiful what she did with the place, but she kept like my whole beauty room. She made the, my closet and the beauty room two bedrooms. So she put a bed in between like the um, shelves and everything my dad did. So she kept so much of it, which was like, I was in tears seeing it. So it makes me so happy knowing that someone else is gonna get use out of it and I had a contractor come and it was just gonna be too risky to you know try to take everything apart and then move it and it still be in like good conditions. I'm gonna do like my old mob look that I always used to do. So today is Cindy and Bear's seventh birthday. They are literally the best cats in the world. I cannot believe it was seven years ago that I got them though. I'm gonna tell you guys the story again because it's like the craziest story. I was allergic to animals literally my whole life. So growing up, I did have a cat, but she never like slept in my room. And I, you know, if I ever pet her, I'd always have to like wash my hands and stuff after. I would get so itchy horseback riding and I would literally die from allergies. Not even being dramatic, it was really bad. Seven years ago, my mom wanted to get another kitten. So she had found a lady not far from us that had just had, um, that cat's just had a litter and I think there was like a total of like 13 cats at the house but when my mom told me, I was like, you're going to see baby kittens, like I need to come. So I've obviously always loved animals I just kind of kept my distance. I think at the time of this, like my fish had just died. So I went with my mom that day. These are the wispy foaminks and I've been constantly putting them just on the outer half, but I kind of want to try a full. So I'm gonna put mascara on and then I'll see if I cut them and they're on the end here, so I shouldn't have cut them at all. But. So I went with my mom that day with zero intentions of getting any cat kittens because I'm allergic so why would I ever do that to myself like when I tell you allergic like it wasn't just I'd sneeze here and there like I would be so stuffed and my eyes would water like it was it was severe how bad my allergies were we were there like three hours didn't sneeze once and now this is in a house with 13 cats I have to find this picture of Cindy when I first got her I had to literally bribe the lady to give her to me because she told me she wasn't for sale. Like, I guess she wanted to keep her. And I was like, name your price. Like, I need her. Like, I just absolutely need her. So I ended up leaving with a kitten that day. And about a week later, I had messaged her and I told her I wanted to come back because I wanted to get her a friend. So I, I feel like every cat, what's two when you already have one? I feel like they need a friend, especially, you know, if you travel a lot, whatever. So I was either gonna get the other calico that looked just like Cindy, or there was like this little gray girl that was just so beautiful. So I was waiting on which one she was allowing me to get because she wanted to keep one of the girls. Those were the only two girls that were left. So when I went there, again, going for one of the two, that's when Mr. Barry, Barry Whitles, stole my heart. He literally jumped on my lap and was purring and would not leave my side the whole time I was there. And oh my God, is Bear like the love of my life. He is the most loving, sweetest little boy and it's their birthday today. So yeah, that was seven years ago. It's crazy how fast time goes. So if anyone is thinking about getting a cat, highly recommend it. It's clearly coming from the crazy lady with five cats and two dogs. And what was so cool is like Cindy and Bear, every time like a new cat came in, they were so welcoming and just made it like so easy for the transition, which they're just the best, the best cats in the world. So happy birthday to my little babies. I'm gonna go in with my Luna liner. Let me know if you guys wanna see a morning routine. I thought that would be funny, like morning routine with five cats, two dogs and a baby. And then under my eyes, I almost want to do like this pink. I'm going to do it. I don't know if it's going to look good in its summary, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then I'm doing the dark matte purple on the edge. Would you believe my phone is still uploading? That means if anyone's tried me, I missed it. All right, let's do some blush on my medium. I don't know if I'm gonna do lipstick 
yet. I kind of just like do liner and call it a day. I'm using the cupcake. <sighs> so I'm gonna figure out what I'm wearing. I got these new pair of Levi's. And they're like baggy or they're supposed to be. So I'm gonna try these puppies on and see. They are the low pro. Super into baggy jeans lately. Low pro mid rise. What to wear for my shirt? Hey, Ben! Did you get your nice wash? literally all I do and it takes maybe 10 minutes no like six minutes so I just repeat this all throughout my hair then there's no like pattern I just like to grab and do it because then it makes it look more natural in my opinion it's the front pieces that really matter so I'll show you guys that you can see I bit grab big pieces the bigger the piece just let it hold a little bit longer so now that I did the back, the front is definitely the most important. We're gonna grab it and curl it towards the face. So we're gonna take the iron and curl. So opposite of like how I was doing it previously. All right guys, so that is it. I am ready to take on the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this little get ready with me slash story time. I love you guys so much and just remember that if you're ever in a situation in life where you're not happy, it is never too late to start over and never stop dreaming. I love you guys so much and until next time, I'll see you guys later.